This week on the Stonebergs, we go into great detail about my baseball-induced depression. We talk a little heavy metal music. We continue our Halloween horror movie fest. And Katie digs deep into the topic of ADHD, specifically how to be a better friend if you suffer from ADHD. Also some nice word of mouth and some other shenanigans. Put on your sweatpants, pour you a cold drink. Enjoy this episode of the Stonebergs on YouTube. Podcasting from their dining room table in California, it's the Stonebirds with Dave Stone and Katie Strandberg. Get it? Advice and encouragement from two goofballs who can barely run their own lives. Call now at 562-548-2012 to be a part of the show. Now welcome the Stonebirds. That's us, dude. That's us. That's us. I know. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm wondrous on this beautiful day. Boo, how the heck are you doing? Oh, if I was any better, you wouldn't be able to stand me. Is that true, though? Is I mean, yeah, I think true? so. Okay. I think you. Okay. You'd like, I can't take this guy. Well, no, I can't. I just, you know, I just am worried about you. Yeah. Do you want to talk about it or? I'd, I'd rather not. Okay. No, we can talk about it. There was a traumatic event that happened in the past week, and um, and I'm sorry for your loss, okay? Yeah. It's just, uh, it's painful. Yeah. You know? I was with you. Mm-hmm. What day was that? I'd like to think that uh, at my advanced age that uh, I'm more emotionally mature sure. than to be bothered sure. by something like this, especially... Given everything that's going on in the world right now, well, yeah, I feel incredibly juvenile and guilty to have any feelings or emotions yeah. about what happened this week. But I, you know, I, I can't. That's who I am. I can't hide my feelings. Yeah, you know, Braves. Brave season's over. It. They lost, <sighs> and it was a nail biter. I will say. No, it wasn't. A oh, nail-biter. it wasn't. That's the problem. <laughs> that final game was. <laughs> You know, but, uh, yeah, just uh, clearly the best team in the all of baseball, all season. Yeah. From opening day to the last pitch of the regular season, clearly. And it really wasn't even close, both statistically in terms of win-loss record and just the level of talent on that team. And we just play, we just laid an egg. Yeah. Just, I don't, okay, I've been dealing with this. Almost my whole life. I've been a sports fan since I was four years old. I played sports all my childhood, all my teenage years. You don't mind. No one likes to lose. But sometimes Mm -hmm. that that team's just better. It happens. Like, hey, we played our best. We played our game the way we typically play. And guess what? It just, we came up short and it just wasn't good enough. And that, while that sucks, that's Okay. We played our best, and we just ran into a better team. That is not what happened. We played like crap. Now, the Phillies are good. I'll give them the Phillies are good, even though okay. they finished 14 games behind the Braves in the National League East Division race, Fourteen, just like last year. And just like last year, in round two of the playoffs, they put the Braves out. And that's the thing, too. It didn't even go to five games. It was the, that's, That round was best of five, meaning first team to win three. We won one measly game, and that was exciting. Game two, we won uh, in dramatic fashion. We talked about that last week. We just played like crap. Like, I, I didn't go back and look at all the stats, but this is no high, hype. Like, I would be willing to bet if you went back and looked at every game, it seemed like the Phillies had base runners on every inning. Every inning of every game. I can't, I watched all the game. I can't think of an inning where the Phillies didn't have base runners. And that's a big deal because that's, that's scoring. That's how you score. Yeah, that's yeah. how you score. Uh, unless you I'm hit a home learning. run. But and and conversely, we just we didn't do anything. Like the most and there's no hype when I say this. The most powerful offensive lineup arguably not this season in the history of baseball. I told you we tied the team season 
long record for home runs. Yeah, there was all those home runs. and We had the highest slugging percentage of any team in any year in the history of baseball. Uh, five guys hit 35-plus home runs. You know, just insane talent and insane production this year. And we get to the playoffs, and they just act like, huh, what? What do we do? Like, it was just just laid an egg. Wow. And again, I wouldn't have been so mad if, like, sometimes, I guess this is payback. In Two years ago, in 2021, we won the World Series, but conversely, we were clearly not the best team that year. We didn't have the best record. We didn't have the best talent. Didn't have the best lineup. But you get hot in the postseason, and you can you can take it all the way. And uh, we did the opposite. We just were dominant in the regular season. Now, not to make excuses, mm-hmm. but they have kind of reformatted the playoff system, and a lot of well, I don't think it's a coincidence that the team, the four teams with the best records in the regular season in order would be the Braves, the Orioles, the Dodgers, and the Brewers. Those four teams had the best record, the four best records in regular season. All four of those teams got eliminated in their first round. Wow. And some of the the, the debate is the Braves, for example, and the Dodgers, they have got the number one and number two seed, meaning in the National League they had the two best records. Therefore, they got they both got to skip that first round. Okay. So, in, in a way, that's nice. Like, oh, you get it's called a buy. You get a buy in that first round. You get to uh, immediately go to the second round, and that's cool. Other than the fact that they didn't play for like a week, you know, uh, 162 game season over the course of six months. I mean, do that math. The, the The teams literally play on average about five and a half, six times a week. Yeah. You might have one off day a week. Sometimes you'll go 10, 14 days and not have an off day. So, point being, you're pretty much playing every day for six months. And baseball, more than any other sport, is is a thing of routine. Baseball players like their routine. We take batting practice at this time. The game starts at this time, blah, blah, blah. So, you got this great team, this powerful team, who's just been playing every day for six months, and now you got to go sit on your butt for six, seven, eight days. And I think that uh, definitely, it, not just the Braves, it hurt. The, the Dodgers got swept. The Orioles got swept. The Brewers got swept. Like that I said, all the four horrible. best teams just. Pfft. Now, the Brewers, that didn't affect them because they did have to play that first round. But Dodgers, Braves, and Orioles all got a bye in that first round. And they all got just. I mean, we're the only team that didn't get swept. Oh, we won game two. But. <sighs> but yeah, and I think this year it hurts so much too because for two reasons. A, like I said, most dominant Braves team I have ever seen. I've been a fan for 42 years. 1982 was my 19, yeah, whatever that is, 41 years. 1982 is the first time I really, like, absorbed, like, okay, I'm going to watch this game, this team every day. It's like five years old. So not only the most talented and most dominant Braves team I had ever watched, so that that's a bummer that they're out, but also, like, I was just so invested in this season. Yeah. And, and speak of routine, it became my routine. Mm-hmm. Five, six days a week, I'm watching the Braves if I'm not traveling. And now that's just taken away from me. Yeah. It, it feels like a breakup where I'm like, oh, oh, come back. Well, I hear you. My thing is this. There's also football. And, and I feel bad yeah. because I, I, I'm i not trying to be like, Oops, sorry about wow. That. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Go ahead. Football yeah, there is-, is nothing to... You know, mm-hmm. be all weird about. Sorry, I don't know what happened. What's going on over there? It's okay. Football's nothing. Well, yeah, uh, my buddy Gilbert texted me, and uh, we talked about you and I. I don't really have any Braves buddies. That's so I got, weird. I got one buddy in Atlanta. Shout out to David Perdue. Great dude. He's the only guy oh. I can really text about the Braves. But uh, Gilbert was sympathetic, and Gilbert's my uh, UJ football buddy. So we text every Saturday. Oh, God. And he, yeah, and he made a good point. He goes, Dave, I know you're <laughs> taking this hard, but it's nothing that a third straight UGA football national title won't cure. So, yeah. and we're still in the running for that. Georgia's on the verge of being the, I, I, it's been done before, but not in many, many years. If Georgia wins the national title this year, it'll be three in a row. 
So, and they're undefeated. They're seven and zero as of right now. Wow. So, well, you know, I'm really sorry, <laughs> and it. I understand it would be as if I had like what another month. You would have another month of baseball, right? If they would go to the World Series ish. Yeah, about three more weeks. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so, the World yeah. Series usually finishes right around uh, the very end of. I think uh, Game 7, I think as I was doing the math, because we're going to be out of town, I think Game 7 of the World Series is like November 5th or something. 5th or 6th. 5th. So, yeah. So, yeah, not only am I heartbroken because yeah. this team underachieved, but also just <laughs> just Sorry. someone, like someone took, like my best friend moved away. <laughs> and now I can't see him for another six months. But there's always next year. Did you ever have a best friend growing up that did move away and it was heartbreaking? a great question no not that I I I don't know if I had a best friend when I was a kid I had a lot of little buddies had a lot of neighborhood I we talked about this I was very lucky that I grew up in a a neighborhood yeah and I probably had 15 little dickhead buddies that I would ride bikes (laughs) with and build forts with and play sports and uh yeah so I don't know if I had like a a best friend that moved away was I was just a revolving door of Chubby little goobers like myself. Aw. Yeah. That's so cute. I had one. Yeah? Becky Miller, RIP. Where'd she? I think she's still with us. Oh, she, so she's not dead? No. Okay. That uh, RIP is a little bit. But misleading. she definitely left when I was like in second grade. I remember her in the back of her car mm-hmm. waving at me. And I cried <laughs> in the middle of the street. Just like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> yeah, it was really oh, sad. Oh, Lord. Anyway, it's fine. Hmm. Single tier. Yeah. But baseball depression is a thing. Yeah. And I think we just need to, you know, reinvent things. Reinvent things to invigorate you about your life, you know? Yeah, I guess so. And again, I know how ridiculous that is. No, I... 46-year-old man. (laughs) I've got everything I could ever want. And the rest of the world is in chaos. And I'm upset about a Major League Baseball team. But... You know, I'm trying to keep it in perspective. No, you're doing better. You know, you're doing, doing a lot better. better. Those first couple of days were, were rough. That was hard. Yeah. Oh, they just underachieved so bad. Well, it's so weird when you're depressed mm-hmm. because it's like I'm used to being depressed. So when you are, I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah. And instead of being like <laughs> kind, like how you are with uh-huh. me and loving, I'm just like, get over it, yeah. Stone. Yeah. It doesn't work. A lot, of, a lot of name calling. A lot of slapping you on the butt. <laughs> a lot of punching me. <laughs> you've been you've been physically abusive is a what? strong word, <laughs> but you've been very free with your hands lately. Yeah, it's you fun. Smack me around to goose ya. It's called goosing. <laughs> I love goosing my boo. You you punch hard. I do yeah. slug bug. I'm well. I'm bringing slug bug back, mm-hmm. and that's so fun. Yeah, you love that because I wait, mm-hmm. and then I just. Boom. That's I'm funny. sorry. Did I ever tell you my slug bug story when I was uh, like in fifth grade? Slug bug is a very common game if you see, what, yeah. a, a VW Beetle? Yeah. It, it has to be a Beetle, right? It doesn't have to be a convertible. But yeah, we used to play that when I was a kid, slug bug. Well, when I was in fifth grade, um, all the boys got really into exotic cars. We get the magazines and stuff. And it's the first time I started learning about Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff. And everybody was just obsessed with Lamborghinis. But I didn't, I'd never seen one. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't have a point of reference. So one day we're on a field trip and I tell my buddy, uh, I think it was, I think it was Jeff New. I told him, I was like, hey, Jeff, why don't we, why don't we play a game instead of slug bug, instead of Beatles, why don't we do slug bug when we see a Lamborghini? And I thought that was my way <laughs> of like, in Georgia. yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll learn what a Lamborghini is without admitting that I don't know what it looks like. I thought I had this great idea, and he was just like, yeah, we're not going to see any Lamborghinis <laughs> in North Georgia <laughs> on a Tuesday field trip. But I liked your idea. Yeah. I think that yeah. was really good. I was so embarrassed to admit I didn't know what a Lamborghini looked like. But oh, I was like, why don't we do slug bug but for Lamborghinis? And this like, is pre-Google. Yeah, it's genius. And he's wow. like, yeah, that's a terrible game. We're not going to see any. So, anyway, uh, I guess. Well, I'm sorry for being physically abused. Yeah, I guess stop hitting me. <laughs> I'm already going through enough. <laughs> I know. Well, that's, I think I'm trying to do a deflection tactic, Mm -hmm. like, hey, Mm -hmm. but yeah, you're not, you know, you're not my, like, hangout buddy. We don't go to pool halls. Yeah, we're not bros. (laughs) Cup check me around the house. (laughs) 
Oh, I forgot to do the timer. Oh, it's all right. Okay. How are you, boo? Enough about me. I'm a grown man. I know. I'll get over it. I know. I Things are good. They are things good. Things are good, and I just got to... I got to put this behind me, you know. No, I know. It's I'm, opening day. Will be I soon feel enough. for you. But let me tell you, watching mm-hmm. baseball with you in the playoffs is the most. I have anxiety. Yeah. I have anxiety. And listen to this. If I, I've never, I, I was like down in the mood stabilizers. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, it's fine. I did my part. Because game, game four, I was I burned a lot of calories that night. You were so anxious. I didn't sit down the whole game. You didn't. And my you were chatter. Like, <laughs> I, was, I had my chatter going. You know, come on, why? Come on, yeah, Ronna. You. Come on. I kept saying, show them who you are. Do what you do. Do what you do, Ronnie. Come on. Come on now, buddy. <laughs> I was just screaming at the TV. Just, I get it. Just, just do what you do. Just play like you've been playing all year. Play half as good yeah. as you've been playing all year, and you'd have had a fighting chance, and they just look like a bunch of little leaguers just running the wrong direction. Although, the, I love those videos. Those are cute. You ever see the little league? The t- there was one I saw I the other like day. Children. It's, a, it's a t-ball video, oh. and a little kid hits the ball, and instead of and he hits it right back to the pitcher, and instead of running to first base like he's supposed to, he just runs at the pitcher and tackles him like oh. it's football. It's really cute. <laughs> that actually is yeah. cute. But uh, you know that technique would have probably been more effective than what the Braves did last week. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Sorry. You doing all right? How are you? Well, I'm great. I've been working. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, putting up some new decor. I'm mm-hmm. really getting into the Halloween spirit Mm -hmm. and I'm excited about it. I'm also fashioning a workspace Mm -hmm. in our bedroom, which has been challenging, but I'll, I'll let everybody know how it goes. But yeah, I've never seen anyone um, so proactive with constantly trying to improve their environment as you. Yeah. You're constantly rearranging furniture, Mm -hmm. putting up, New wallpaper, taking mm-hmm. down old wallpaper. Mm-hmm. You just, uh, you got a real lust for life when it comes to that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's inspiring. Thank you. Well, it's not, okay, here's the thing. I am such a sensory person. Mm-hmm. So I'll sit on the couch, and if I'm looking at our little dining room area, mm-hmm. it'll just, it's like, that picture doesn't go there. That picture doesn't go there. What can go there? Mm-hmm. Why can't I decide what goes there? Is there a chair? Why am I not reading over that? So that's why I do it. Okay. I get stuck in my loop. Mm-hmm. And then I just move everything. Yeah, you, uh, I don't know if you inadvertently took some speed <laughs> this no, weekend. I didn't. Uh, all day, Yeah. Friday and Saturday, you were just... In work mode. Just, Crushing the game. You Seriously, you must have worked like 10 hours each day just in the bedroom, just throwing out stuff, rearranging stuff. Okay, well, I was going to rearrange and, and okay, so a friend, not a friend. Well, she's kind of a fr- I don't know what she is. She's a neighbor. Okay, be careful. <laughs> okay, sorry. So th- our neighbor who's moving. Oh, yeah, she's definitely a neighbor. She's a neighbor. <laughs> she's a neighbor. So she's moving and she had a garage sale. Mm-hmm. But it was very specific. Mm -hmm. You had to, like, submit pictures by Wednesday. The garage sale was on Saturday. And I had mentioned to her, like, oh, I have some stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's what got me started on, oh, what can I get rid of? You know, Mm -hmm. all that. And then I got social anxiety the day of the garage sale. And that's when I was like, okay, I'll rearrange the entire apartment. I'm mm-hmm. very busy. So I think that's what happened. Oh, you created work for yourself to give I yourself did. an excuse not to go to the garage sale. I did. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't Diabolical. let her know <laughs> because I was afraid of her reaction. Mm-hmm. What do you mean you're afraid of her reaction? Well, I kind of mentioned, like, I kind of made a commitment. I said, I have some stuff to sell. Mm-hmm. And then I just didn't follow through. I didn't show up to the garage sale. I didn't really ask about the garage sale. So then I felt bad. So I bought a coat rack. Hmm. And that's in our bedroom. Yeah. That I have to figure out where it goes. (laughs) It was weird. But uh, I got got a big, big news today. Okay. Virgie comes back tomorrow. Oh, right. She's been gone for like a month. One of my best friends has been gone for like ever. Mm -hmm. And... The good news with her absence is that Best me... Best friend slash neighbor. Yeah. Oh, yeah, neighbor. Because mm-hmm. I like convenience. Mm-hmm. Uh, she <laughs> is gone for a month, and now she comes back tomorrow. Um, but her roommate, mm-hmm. 
and I have just bonded. Yeah, Mark. Me and Mark are just on a different level of bonding right now. We call each other. Yeah. We went to, oh. That's all right. I want to I hear this. How dare you? How dare you, Timer? I am saying interesting things. Your friendship with Mark is hilarious because Mark, um, we, we've talked about Mark and Virgie before. Both oh, yeah. Both probably mid-60s, late-60s. No 60s, idea. Don't know uh, what age. Retired, mm-hmm. uh, platonic roommates. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've known each other for like 40 years. Mm-hmm. Ironically, both from Pennsylvania didn't meet each other till they moved out here independently. Um, but yeah, you and Mark, well, and Virgie too, but it, uh, your friendship with Mark is really funny to, to listen to you guys talk on the phone. Yeah. Well, Mark is so, he will get so much information mm-hmm. out in 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. For example, this morning, he called me. I answered because he does not like when you don't answer the phone because he'll do a monologue for about 30 seconds Mm -hmm. about how no one answers their phone. Mm -hmm. Why do I even call? So I answered and he said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, I'm researching for the podcast. And he's like, you know, it'd be great AI actors. And I was like, that would be kind of cool. He's like, because they never die. And then he said, I have to go get Virgie half and half because Mm -hmm. I threw away her half and half and she likes half and half in her coffee because milk is too runny. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm just going to go to Trader Joe's right now. So we'll get coffee and do our thing another day. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. He's very particular. He is. And I love it. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're pals. But by the way, there are AI actors now. I just saw something this week. Some... I don't know what show it is. I think it's a Disney show, what? like teenager show. And there was some clip going around of like, um, look like high school cheerleaders at a basketball game. And then they cut to the audience and one row is clearly like humans. And then the row right behind them is clearly AI. Really? And they're just moving like, <laughs> <laughs> look like animatronic puppets. Yeah. Weird. Pretty, pretty weird. That's weird. What do you think of that? I mean, why not just use real people? You're like, Real actors. what if they did AI baseball players? Yeah, probably been better that. than the Braves. Okay. Mm. <laughs> well, but we're going to get through it. AI baseball players <laughs> probably make some contact. They'd probably move the runner, play some small ball, get something going. You, you know? do have a, a sadness to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry. That's okay. It is. I know it's ridiculous. No, it's I not. Know it's, it's ridiculous. Like a, it is like a little gray cloud. Mm-hmm. My little boo. And you're so positive and funny and great. So when you're sad, it really affects the ecosystem in here. Yeah. No pressure. But you can't you can't be sad because that's my job. <laughs> you're the Do you sad know what I mean? One, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. okay. Cause I'm not I'm trying to get yeah. better, two, but two sads don't make a happy. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. In fact, and then we got Charlie who's always depressed or humping a duck. Listen, mm-hmm. it's weird. Boo, uh, talking about uh, your productive weekend yeah. with all the home repairs and improvements and stuff. Yeah, isn't that uh, great? I, and I, that's I, all. We're I gonna certainly move on appreciate to, nope. it. I appreciate the effort. And I appreciate uh, all the hard work you do around here. Although um, uh, it doesn't do well for my nerves. Um, I've talked about this before. We're married now. You're my wife. You're my ride or die. Yeah. You're my favorite human. Eight billion people on the planet. You're my favorite person. Oh. That being said, you are a bit of a klutz. That's true. You're, you're, you're clumsy. Yeah. You're accident prone. Always have been. And I always, no matter what you're doing, if you're driving to the mall <laughs> or, or hanging a picture on the wall, I always ask you to just be, be safe. <laughs> be safe and be careful, right? And then yesterday, we have at least one ladder. I don't like it. Okay, but you, you start. It's too big. It's not, it's so stupid, that ladder. I hate it. You start, Do you want me to go on my ladder rant? No. Oh. But <laughs> my concern is that you're repurposing all the other furniture. You're like Tetrising your own footstools out of furniture, ottomans, chairs. Yeah. You were standing. I mean, it was just, it really was tough to watch because I just, and so what I've had to do, and this isn't <laughs> like me being funny. Okay. This isn't me being dark. Uh-oh. But I've, I've started to take video of you while you do these risky behaviors in case I ever need to use it as evidence in my defense. Uh, Defense? Well, I'm just saying. Oh, if I I die? Well, worst case scenario, but also you slip off of your little homemade footstool. Well, it's a chair from World Market, and it's very well built. And then you, you, you 
bang yourself, you hit your head on the coffee table, now you got a black eye. Okay. You know, it's it's a little unnerving mm-hmm. being married to someone who's <laughs> so clumsy mm-hmm. and accident prone. A lot because of bruises. Inevitably. Oh, look. Inevitably, it's, <laughs> there's going to be accusations <laughs> tossed my way. So I literally, I've got video, okay. like little 10 second clips of you doing the dangerous thing. Now, one would say, well, why not put down the camera and go help your wife? That's I've, a good point. I, I've tried that, and you shoo me away, and you yell at me. I don't, I just am like, I'm in my zone. I know what I'm doing. I yeah. know what I'm doing. But, like, I don't want to really. get caught up in some, the staircase <laughs> scenario. Where I'm like, ah, oh, she fell down the stairs. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. So I'm collecting sure. video evidence that shows you doing these risky behaviors in the event that I ever need to show the authorities that, like, oh, look, she was doing this stuff way before the incident. So. Well, that's good that you're planning for your safety uh, yeah. in the future. But I would like to say, what if we can spin this around? Mm-hmm. Let's take that footage. Mm-hmm. And is there, like, a parkour school? Maybe I could use <laughs> my climbing and weird abilities yeah. to apply. Is there, like, a college? I don't know what's going I on. I think you just hate me. This is just a lot of rigmarole, boo. Rigmarole. Rigmarole. I don't know. Listen, what are you doing over there? This music keeps playing. You're not I, active I, listening. Well, because I need I'm active being listening. distracted. Okay. okay. I heard rigmarole. What does that mean again? I don't know, but it's funny. It is fun to say. I, it just means <laughs> hogwash, <laughs> nonsense. Rigmarole. Rigmarole. What do you mm-hmm. think, Charlie? Oh, he's next to me. In my little chair. <laughs> I love my little chair. Yeah. Well, Boo, do we have any calls? We do. Let's I figured play we'd one. Uh, go to the phones here. 562-548-2012. In that order. Give us a call and let us know uh, what's on your mind, okay? Hey, Dave. Katie. This is Brad out of uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, this is actually for Dave. I don't know if you've ever heard of a band called Spirit World, but they have a record called Death Western. And it's really good. I know you're more of a metal guy, less of a punk and hardcore guy, but it's a it's a great infusion of those. Uh, I I call it a basically Cormac McCarthy on uh, speed. I think you'd really dig it. So I, I was just hoping that maybe I could uh, let you know that you might be missing something there. On the second thought too, I just want to say congratulations that you guys uh, ate it on to the YouTube. Very excited to see that. It gives me something to watch while I'm cooking dinner for the kids. Just want to say thank you guys for the content. Uh, I have a little bit of a hole in my heart from Boogie Monster ending, but I was glad to move on over to you guys. I'm slowly making my way through the catalog. So keep making the uh, content, and I'm going to keep watching and listening at work. And uh, once again, Dave, that is Spirit World. The album is called Death Western. Trust me, you can't miss it if you look it up on Apple Music or whatever you use. It's great artwork, all right? So uh, you guys keep it between the dishes. Thanks. Bye. There we oh, go. I'll keep between the ditches. That's a Rob from Buffalo. That means stay on a straight road or what? It just, just... means don't wreck your van. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, dark. Rob, with a music uh, <laughs> recommendation, the band is Spirit World. The album is Death Western. I Ooh. like that. And uh, actually, I think this is right up your alley. Me? This is This is more of uh, kind of what you're into rather than what I'm into. Let me see. Let me see. Mm. Beefy. Mm. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, that was uh, that was twenty year old Dave's whole world right there. Oh. That song called Ulcer. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I used to be a big metal guy. I've uh, I've mellowed out as I've aged. I've kind of uh, slowly segued into the alt country. And some of the, even the jam band stuff. I don't listen to metal as much as I used to, but uh, Rob, that's a that's a good one right there. Yeah, Rob, that's Spirit great. Spirit World. How about, uh, that one's called Ulcer. We also have uh, Purified in Violence. This is a good one. Here we go. I'm doing my exercise. Here we go. Or maybe Relic of Damnation. A little bit of a Lamb of God thing going on there, Rob. I like it. Lamb of God, another metal band. Been I like lambs. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, right on. I just had a panic attack. Right on. Thank I you, just, Rob. Appreciate that. I thought it was going to be like covers of pop songs, mm-hmm. and so you're a liar. I'm a liar. That's not really my genre mm-hmm. of music. Yeah, I was. I was uh, utilizing a device uh, known as comedy. <laughs> <laughs> or like, oh. hey, look over here, but we really go that way. Do you way. remember mm-hmm. how that works, Mister Sad I don't. Shack. I don't. <laughs> uh, Rob oh. called. That's a uh, Rob has called since then. Oh, uh, because a couple of weeks ago you asked about a call that I didn't want to play because it was a, somebody had recommended a band and oh. I didn't like them and I didn't want to, you know. But Rob, it wasn't you. It was another band and somebody else called. It was uh, I won't name the other band, but it was a little more. Uh, I guess what you would call like. Uh, what do they call it? Freak folk? Where is it? Oh. Like uh, some of this folky stuff that just, I don't know. It's like. Free folk? Uh, freak folk. Freak folk. Yeah, like, like freak out, but it's still folk and banjo. And somebody oh. had recommended one of those bands. And some of that just uh, just not my cup of tea. Even though I love banjo stuff and I love folk music. But yeah. some there's all these, there's a million different little subgenres now. And it's just, oh, it gets a little convoluted. But uh so Rob had called back and was like, "I'm sorry you didn't like my Aww. recommendation." And it wasn't. It was. I like. I'm. I'm down with that. Now, granted, that's not something I could listen to all the time unless I want to just annoy the shit out of Katie. But, no, uh, no, that's good stuff. You can listen. We have. You know, I think uh, the headphones, mm-hmm. the the you know noise count canceling. Mm-hmm. You could rock out in those. Yeah, it's true. Huh? Yeah. Look at me. What am I doing with this microphone? See, I'll put that on my. Uh, I'm not a fan of wordplay, although I do have a, a playlist called Kmetal Bells. Is it a kettlebells? Oh. Kmetal Bells. K- I'll put that on my Kmetal Bells <laughs> playlist, Rob. <laughs> Spirit World. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, Rob, thank you for the metal recommendation. Mm-hmm. Thank S- you. Speaking of the dark arts, Ooh. we've uh, really stepped on the gas this week with our Halloween movie viewing. Oh my gosh, we really have. Yeah. We really, 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 really have. We watched uh, four or five this week. Yeah. And they were all pretty good. There was a couple of stinkers. The stink, one stinker we saw was uh, one called Jester. Okay, so I was really rooting for that one. Well, it was one of those where the uh, the trailer sucked me in, and I'm like, ah, oh, that trailer it looks pretty good. And then you watch the movie, and you're like, oh, every decent scene in the movie was in the trailer. Yeah. Because there's nothing else. You saw the whole movie in the trailer. Yeah, it was it, it felt like one of those it felt like um like a high school audio video project, like yeah. a student film. Not even high school, like, I think like elementary. It, it felt, was like now kids know everything. Yeah. It felt so like they had about doing, a thousand dollar budget. Oh yeah. It wasn't great. Yeah. It could have been good. The but, mask, it was scary. Mm-hmm. It, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't awesome. But uh, we redeemed ourselves, watched um, a real good one last night. And I thought I had seen this one, but I think I was confusing it with something else because I've heard a lot of people recommend this. And every time they recommend it, I'm like, oh, I saw that. But then we watched it. I'm like, no, I hadn't seen it. We watched The Babadook. Oh. That was good. It was so good and weird and creepy. Yeah. Oh, my God. And that's my only issue with sometimes with horror movies. And I guess it's not fair to the movie itself. But, like, all right, we're going to watch a horror movie. Like, we want to be scared. We want to be frightened. And then just, I think a lot of times, to be truly scared and frightened, you can't schedule it. You can't plan it. And that's the only problem with watching a horror movie. Like, All right, we're going to sit down and watch this movie, and hopefully we'll be scared. And sometimes it's just not what yeah. you had hoped for. But uh, but um, this one, man, it 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 hit all the checked all the boxes. I I would like to say what I'm noticing with the really really good horror movies is the person, the monster. It's really funny. It's becoming a trope. Is an older woman. Hmm. Who loses it. Mm -hmm. Like there are just, or an older woman that's like hideous. Mm -hmm. Like The Shining did it Mm -hmm. with the woman in the bathtub. Yeah. And then, but that's becoming like a theme, which I find amazing and Mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. But as a woman that's getting older, I cannot wait to just go nuts and be a demon. You're going to be a a creepy old lady? Absolutely. I'm going to follow people in the parking Mm -hmm. lot. I'm going to just write weird notes like, I'm watching you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. You'll be good at that. Thank you. I, see you doing I can't that. wait. I'm just excited. Okay, and we also saw, oh, ooh, I really liked this one, the Amityville. Amityville. Amityville Horror. Yep. Yep. 
That's a classic. I saw that when I was really little, but I, I didn't remember anything about it. You I just, saw that when you were little? Yeah, I saw oh, it uh, when I was elementary school. That was a big hit because oh. it was one of the most popular, at least back then, uh, haunted house movies. Ooh, that was yes. like one of the standard, like, oh, you want a haunted house movie, Amityville Horror. And I'm pretty sure that one's based on a true story. Yeah, it yeah, is. I think that happened uh, New York State, possibly. Yeah. I think it was in New York. Somewhere dope. But, uh, boy, that's a good one. Oh, my gosh, it was so good. Oh, uh, James Brolin. Yeah. So James, yeah, who, Josh is John, the younger one. Nope, Josh. James. Josh is the younger one, right? Yep. Josh Brolin. Yeah. Um, no Country for Old Men. Yep. Dozens of other movies. This is his dad. Really rocking that late seventies hairdo. Oh my gosh, his hair! Like what was oh, it? Is that, that a, hair? Is that a perm? <laughs> how does how does a guy get a, his hair like that? It's a perm. Perm. Okay. It's a perm, or he has naturally curly hair, but it was a little bit, or a wig could have been a great wig. Yeah. Or as you know, a lot of people like to call it hairpiece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had something or going an extension. on. There. Yeah, was that was intense. so creepy. But yeah, great movie. Great oh, so awesome. Haunted house movie. Oh, so awesome. Yeah. I loved it. Uh, we watched uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I'd seen this one a couple times. Now, I'm a fan of both. The original, I think, is like 54, 56. Uh, the remake was late 70s with the Donald Sutherland. That, that's, that premise is one of my favorite horror movie or sci-fi premises of, you know, everybody in this town is not what they say. Oh, yeah. Something's askew. Something's askew. I love that. Creepy women that work at a general store, mm -hmm. it seems to be prevalent in yeah. those kind of movies, yeah. and they're so weird, and yeah. they're always, like, selling weird dead frogs or something, uh -huh. or... <laughs> or was that just that one movie? <laughs> yeah, was that in this movie? That was movie? that weird Midsommar movie. Which one? Oh, the one, uh, uh, Wicker Man. Wicker Man. That yeah. was in Wicker Man. Yeah. But yeah. That's a different movie than the one we're talking about now. <laughs> we're going to be talking. The topic today I think you'll really enjoy <laughs> because it talks about this. But yes. And then uh, we watched uh, the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. Ooh. That's a good one. I think 2006, maybe. Uh, that original was late 70s. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I've seen the original. It was good. But uh, the remake, you know, people, it depends on a case-by-case -case basis. But sometimes the remake doesn't really do the original justice. Yeah. You know, but then sometimes the remake, it's like, well, you know, with all the advances and whether it be CGI or special effects or just whatever, sometimes the remake, it's kind of refreshing to see a modern take on an older story. Yeah. But uh, this one, I'm not going to say it was better than the original, but it was it was definitely entertaining. Yeah. I enjoy it. I love that premise, too, of, like, <laughs> mutant humanoids that maybe have been affected by nuclear testing or whatever. I absolutely just, am one of those people. Yeah. I I I fully believe that Corona, California, <laughs> it was the hill that I lived on. Mm -hmm. It did probably have eyes, and also I am absolutely something's up. You know what I <laughs> something's mean? Askew. Something's Something strange. Yeah. In the neighborhood. Well, Oof. whatever it is, it works on you. Bro. Thank you. I, I I like the finished product. Stop it. Even if there was, you know, a few few little mm -hmm. mishaps. Yeah, that's all right. All right. I but could yeah, be an alien. but yeah, some good movies this week. Um, only one real stinker. It was, was really the Jester. Oof, the but, Jester. Uh, got, a, got a few more to get to on the list before Halloween. But well, uh, I hope so. I've been enjoying our, our horror movie nights. Me too. We turn off all the lights. Yes. And I don't know why I like doing this, but I like turning off all the lights and then opening all the windows. Yes, that's the best. I don't know why I like that because usually I'm I don't want anybody looking in. Yeah. I like. I like everything to be private and don't look in. But not that you can look in and see. We're on a second floor. But, like, there's just something about, like, all the lights being out. And then you look over and you see the trees or the moonlight or something. Ooh, I think yeah. that's what it is. So. And it's fun. You feel like you're almost camping. Mm -hmm. It's like a let's, let's camp and watch a film. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do that a lot when I was uh, – I, I know uh -huh. that kind of goes against the principles of camping. But um, if I was camping – I used to camp a lot in between gigs on the road. So I didn't look at that as like necessarily recreational camping. It was just mm -hmm. like this is cheaper than a hotel. But I remember one time I spent a week at a uh, state park in South Dakota. And it was basically looked like a big cow pasture. It was open fields. Ooh. Just you could see for miles in every direction. And for like a week I was the only one there. Whoa. And every night I would put my uh, laptop on the uh, picnic table and pull up my lawn chair and just watch a movie 
in the darkness, in the oh. wide open spaces at night. That was a lot of fun. So that's terrifying. That's kind of what you know we're recreating here yeah. a little bit. So, but yeah, good times. Okay. Good but times. Boo. I, I have a topic today. We got a topic we today. We always have a topic. Shifting gears. We're shifting, okay? I'm going to put the timer on. Okay. Here we go. Today's topic is how to improve your friendships when you have ADHD. Okay. <laughs> right on. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited for this? I'm very excited. Okay, so also... I've got some friendships I need to improve. You do? So, oh maybe I'll... Th- this, this do could you apply- have ADHD? Well, I was going to ask, can this apply to people even if they don't have ADHD? Yeah, actually, okay. if you're an asshole. Okay. So, no, yeah, just well, that, that might Not work that too. people with ADHD mm-hmm. are assholes, but I have ADHD, mm-hmm. so I kind of remember. But, um, all right, so we're going to get into it. So, ADHD, you're a neurodivergent. Your brain works differently. And you have to be mindful with your friendships and not interrupt. That's rule number one. I love interrupting. And here's why. (laughs) I feel like I need to get this information out Mm -hmm. before it expires in my head. Yeah, you do that a lot to me. You interrupt me, but you explained that to me years ago. And now I don't take offense. You're like, hey, I'm not trying to dominate the conversation. Right. But when these thoughts pop in my head, they only stay there for a second or two. Yes. And I got, because I don't know how many times you've started a sentence and then something <laughs> happens that throws you off just for a fraction of a second. And then when you try to rejoin, I'm like, well, you said something about something and you're like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I like, just have so no they, idea. They literally just flash in and flash out. Yeah. And well, and you're talking continuously Mm -hmm. and for an adhd person it is active listening like who's talking you're talking me say you're talking to me in okay in this example Uh you're talking charlie needs to go Mm -hmm. he doesn't like being up here okay i'm sorry uh (laughs) yeah focus an example Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah focusing on the person in front of you Mm -hmm. that is very hard for people with adhd Mm -hmm. and it's hard to remember details so okay Let's just keep going. Be mindful of interrupting. Become aware of your current listening skills. I have to listen. Mm -hmm. Like right now I'm focusing on you and I'm actively listening. Charlie just jumped off. That Mm -hmm. was hard. The zombie lights are now moving. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are happening in my head, but I'm looking at you in the eye and we're talking. Okay. Okay. That is hard to do though. It is so Um, hard. I just interrupted you. (laughs) I mean, this isn't a, I've heard this phrase several times this isn't an original thought but uh some people are just instead of listening they're just waiting to talk and i've been guilty of that really yeah even i think you you don't necessarily have to have adhd to think that way like i'll think of a point like you know if we're having conversation i'll think of a point that i want to make and then once i've established like oh this is my point that i'm gonna make then i'm just wait i'm listening but i'm also waiting for you to stop talking so then i can make my point which that's not necessarily good. You got to be able to do both. Right. You got to be able to listen to what you're saying and still have my point queued up. Exactly. Ready to go. Have the point queued up or maybe the person speaking will acknowledge your point. Mm-hmm. Maybe your point will come, but they're not done talking. Mm-hmm. I found that a lot. For example, when I interrupt you mm-hmm. and then you're like, yeah, I was going to get to that or whatever it is. And it's like, oh yeah, sorry. Sorry. Right. I forget. Okay. Uh, you have to stay on topic. Okay. That's tough. That's that's very tough for ADHD people. So hard. So hard. Do you find it hard staying on topic? Not necessarily. If you're interested in the topic. Yeah. But if you're not. But I also, I, I understand how that happens because we're talking about mm-hmm. baseball or whatever. And then in that conversation, a little bitty branch Right. Uh, a different topic or different whatever. And then you're like, oh, then that leads. Well, it's just the old classic. How did we get from here to here? Right. You know, you start talking about this and then that leads to that and that leads to that and that leads to that. And then, then you're like, wait, how did we go from here to here? Well, that's so. the best talking to another ADHD person, mm-hmm. like ADHD on ADHD, like just talking. It, it will just be a tree that goes every single branch mm-hmm. and 
And it's like, oh, great. We talked about nothing. Yeah. Like, we kind of just talked over each other for an hour. But it was really fun and weird. Yeah. So that was cool. But with a neurodivergent person, ADHD, and a, uh, a person that, I hate the word normal, but, you know, doesn't have it. What's the opposite of neurodivergent? Just- Divergent? No. Neuro? Yeah. Typical. Typical. Thanks, Aaron. Neurotypical. 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 So I would be more neurotypical. You would be more nor- neuro... N- but you get uh-huh. it. N-T. Let's just go there. Let's just simplify it. Now, you also do another thing. I don't know if this is the ADHD or just you being a goober. Okay. Um, but oftentimes, you will start a sentence in your head, but finish it verbally. Like That's you'll very say, true. We'll just be sitting around and just out of nowhere, you're like, Oh, yeah, I, I called her. She said she can do Tuesday. <laughs> and I'm like, who, what, when? And you're like, oh, Melissa, the, the dog thing. Oh, sorry. And you you would yeah. th- you skip that first part. Yeah. And you just verbalize the second part, and then I'm lost. Right. So. And then you have to be like, so wait, are we talking about what? Mm-hmm. Wait, what? And then I'm annoyed because I'm like, I already said the answer yeah. out loud. Mm-hmm. I asked the question and then I finished my sentence out yeah. loud. We don't need to revisit. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's called listening skills. Yeah. Whoa. What's Charlie's just What's going Charlie out? doing? <laughs> Charlie's not a very good listener. All right. So here's the thing with ADHD people and friendships. Horrible at them. Not good. A lot of people with ADHD that don't work on themselves and go to the you know, therapy or try to get medication or whatever. They just don't remember friends. (laughs) And it's true. I have like one-on-one, I can just listen and be there and I'll get so excited about someone. And then I'll just day-to-day life happens. Mm -hmm. And then I just get derailed. Mm -hmm. And so people think I, I don't care about them or I don't want to foster or nurture this friendship. Mm -hmm. That is not the case. However, my actions are proving opposite Mm. because I'm not checking in. I'm not remembering anything they talked about. I'm not doing anything to help nurture and follow through on commitments. So, yeah, it's hard making friends with an ADHD person. That's an old Stephen Wright joke. What? He says, my nephew has HD, ADHD. He can barely pay attention, but when he does, it's incredibly clear. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let me just tell you, Synthony, Synthony, wow. Take two, Cynthia Hammer, who is an ADHD coach, gives you tools. She sounds like a female wrestler. I know, Mm -hmm. she does. I kind of love her last name, Hammer. Anyway, oh, sorry, yep. So she's talking about how (laughs) normals... I put normals in this, I'm sure. Yeah. Typicals. Yep. Typicals. People get preoccupied with their lives in general. It, it's hard to do friendships. It's That's just, they're already kind of like, okay, because everyone's working. Mm-hmm. There might be kids. There might be sickness, health, whatever. So ADHD peeps have a, we have a hard time daily functioning. Mm. Like, remember when I was like, I took my meds today and brushed my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's a big girl? <laughs> <laughs> but it's so hard because we don't prioritize those kind of things. So on top of that is commitments to friends and commitments to other things. And it's just like, this is too much. Mm. I'm just going to give up. So no. So <laughs> that's bad. You shouldn't do that. Okay. So I wanted to share this with you because this might be the most embarrassing list ever. This is a list from Cynthia Hammer, the smash hit ADHD coach Mm -hmm. from verywellmind.com. And people with ADHD tend to have bad friendships because of their impulsiveness. Because Mm -hmm. neurotypical people think they're insane. Mm -hmm. Now, what is impulsiveness, boo? I don't struggle with any of this. Would Uh you like me to list some things? Sure. All right. (sighs) Impulsivity. Abruptly changing or canceling plans. People with ADHD, an inability to stand still, (laughs) binge eating or binge drinking, Mm -hmm. clearing out belongings to start anew, (laughs) destroying property. (laughs) What do you you mean destroying property? Well, it says destroying property. Like a juvenile delinquent, you know, setting a fence on fire. I think it's like when I get mad at the Uh vacuum or something, like 
yesterday with the green lights, how I messed up because I took uh-huh. the staple gun and then I ruined it. Yeah. I ripped off the green lights. Okay. That would be destroying something hmm. because I was angry that I did that. Okay. But it's, you know, it's a victimless crime. Yeah. Does that fall under the ADHD or are you just a violent asshole? Could be both. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Escalating confrontations. Uh-huh. That's impulsive. Okay. Hi, I want to get this dopamine rush. Hi, I'm going to escalate this to the highest, which I've done many times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, an ability to take, oh, an inability to take criticism without affront. Mm-hmm. What does affront mean? Offense? I guess. You, you're offended that someone... Gave you notes? It's hard to take criticism. Mm -hmm. I thought this was just like because my dad yelled at me a lot, Mm -hmm. but I don't think so. It's an ADHD thing. Well, that probably didn't help. Yeah, probably didn't. You're right. Okay. I feel like over the years, I've gotten better at giving you notes on something without it coming off as aggressive or rude or critical. You're so much better. Yeah. Yeah, You are so much better. It took a while. It took a while to learn the Katieisms. Yeah. Because you have to be like, how do you do it? What's, give us an example. Which is a lot of prefaces. Okay. You know, like, hey, I understand this and I'm not trying to be this, but, you know, here's this thing that we need to talk about. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stakes have to be low. Because if you're like, this is an important conversation, I would rather eat glass Mm -hmm. and tell you about it than sit down and have it Mm -hmm. because I'm in trouble and I hate that. Okay, next impulsivity. Um, Joining and quitting a lot of groups. (laughs) Because you go on those ADHD highs where you're like, I could take on anything. Yeah. And then the next day you're like, oh, oops, I can't. Yeah. I'm not really great at that. Yeah, I think a lot of that's human nature, though. That's true. I don't think that's uh, specific necessarily to ADHD. I think it's human nature to... Yeah. Be like, I'll start the diet on Monday, and then Monday gets here, and you're like, eh, hey, maybe Friday. Yeah. You Tomorrow, know. putting things off. Mm-hmm. That's true. Or um, starting and stopping. I, you know, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. You know, I'm in, this is my new thing. And like a week later, that thing sucks. I don't yeah. want to do that anymore. Well, maybe you have ADHD too. Maybe. I don't know. We'll <sighs> test you. Anyway, jumping to conclusions mm-hmm. because my mind goes nine steps ahead. Mm-hmm. So if you're like, oh, uh, the landlord didn't call back. In my head, I'm like, they hate us. Mm-hmm. We're going to get kicked out. Oh, crap, where are we going to move? Why is he hating us? Yeah. We're fun. We're fun. Yeah. I have to remind you, my <laughs> my little mantra sometimes is, let's not worry about that until it's time to worry about that. It's such a good mantra. You know? Well, because like, I always assume the worst. Always. Now, that can also be detrimental in terms of you know, too much of that just leads you to never preparing for anything. That's true. You know, but sometimes you, you do have a habit of, like, catastrophizing things that don't necessarily, it's not ready to do that yet. Yes. Hey, let's let's not go there yet. Yes. Let's give whomever the benefit of the doubt. Yes. And then, you know, once we get some more data to compute, then we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But, yeah, you definitely yeah. tend to... Think the worst sometimes. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Over apologizing. You do that too much all the time. You apologize for th- I, this. Is impulsivity uh, almost by the way, guys. every this day? This is what impulsive people do. Every day, I have yeah. to tell you, hey, you don't have to apologize for that. I know. Yesterday, you're vacuuming and you're impro- What's my my thing? I will never get annoyed at you if you're doing something that is for the greater good. If you're do, I'm not going to get annoyed at you for vacuuming. Yeah. Because you're vacuuming. It's yeah. it's making our home better. Right. But I'm, you're watching TV. That's okay. As I'm vacuuming. And that's okay. And I just have to do this extra. I just have to vacuum in that mm-hmm. moment. And that's, that's the impulsive. I will never complain about you doing something like that that's improving our home, improving whatever. Right. So, I mean, not that I'm some enlightened whatever, but I, I just learned that years ago. Like, especially when you're dealing with... Your girlfriend or your wife or whomever, you know, or even in a business relationship, you know, hey, if that, if my business partner or whoever, right, they're doing something that's going to benefit me either directly or indirectly, yeah. I'm not going to get annoyed at what they're doing. Yeah, you have to look at the big picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, oversharing emotions. What? <laughs> 
That's uh, not the Katie I know. Nope. Overspending. <laughs> That's not the Katie I know. Oh. How many coffees did we get today, boo? It's never good when the coffee comes in a heavy, heavy bag. Okay, so I am not good with details, and mm-hmm. I accidentally got a triple order of what we usually get, mm-hmm. and that's weird. Came in two sacks. But you know what's great about it? And I'll tell you. What's great is that now we'll be caffeinated. That's- Aaron has two. He has a gift to bring home mm-hmm. to himself. That's right. Even though the ice will melt and it'll yeah. be watery and gross. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. listen, it's there. <laughs> Physical violence. Yeah. <laughs> Slug bug. Slug bug. Um, quitting a job suddenly. Done that. Have you? Oh, in my early 20s. Really? It was like, yeah. You quit job without notice? I was just terrified. I mean, I had so much anxiety, and then I would get nervous, and impulsively mm-hmm. I would quit. Wow. It Bethany, happens. wow. Um, self-harm. I don't know. Maybe. Going back to that real quick. Okay. Uh, I remember. <laughs> I love how I just, I'm like, never mind. Let's I remember keep going. when I was a teenager, I, you know, we talked about, it was a couple of years ago, we went through my entire employment history. Oh, yeah. I've had literally dozens of jobs. But I remember working just whatever jobs when I was a teenager. And then the boss or, or whoever was like, you've got to give two weeks notice. Yeah. And I'm just like, or what? <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, I understand, yes, it would be nice. Yeah. But also, the flip side of that coin is, if I were to get fired, you're going to give me two weeks notice on my firing? Oh, that's a good but point. But I just remember, like, I had a couple bosses that, like, just drove that point home. You got it. I'm like, no. Yeah, if I'm if, not if doing it's time it. to quit, I'm going to quit. Now, I understand it's not professional for me to, but, like, you, you can't enforce <laughs> that. How are no. you going to enforce that, bro? <laughs> Guess what? I quit. Kiss my ass. Anyway. <laughs> And uh, threatening to hurt oneself or others. I haven't done that yet. Or self-mutilation. But listen, there's always room for growth. All right. That's not funny, boo. It's not? I don't like to think about you doing things like that. Okay. Well, there are solutions. Can we do some solutions? Sure. Sure. Okay, so this is just coping with impulsiveness. Mm -hmm. And impulsiveness isn't just an ADHD thing. It's a neurodivergent thing or even a neurotypical thing. Mm -hmm. People get revved up and then they do something. Mm -hmm. So don't do something, it says, when, like, don't let one feeling dictate your future. Sure. Don't let this one thing, you know, and now I'm just going to burn it all down. Mm -hmm. Like, just Take a step back. Mm -hmm. So you have to conduct a, and this is what they call a chain analysis. Okay. So when you do something impulsive, you have to kind of go backwards and be a little detective. So what made me, what was something that happened before I got impulsive, before I started overspending or before I started organizing manically or whatever it is? And then what did I feel what and what was the conclusion like what happened after i did this and that's called a chain analysis okay. so you can kind of look back at oh okay every time this happens i get really anxious and then i want to do something so instead of doing something that's not great mm-hmm. do so- go on a walk or yeah. do something different that you have to replace the thing yeah you yeah, know that makes sense yeah like replacing harmful behavior with productive behavior yes mm-hmm. Uh, number two, look for solutions. Okay. You're very solution oriented. I, I love that. solutions. Yeah. Big fan because uh, I just always see a problem. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you have to come up with solutions that are creative. Um, so ask yourself, what can I have done differently uh, before I overspent on Amazon? Or, you know, what coping strategies can I use? This is kind of, listen. This hammer lady kind of repeats herself, so we're going to keep going. All right, so challenges in friendships with people with ADHD. Okay, this is great. Uh, Listen, we forget everything, Mm -hmm. and that makes people feel bad Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you you have to nurture your friendships. Friendships are like a garden. Mm -hmm. You have to water them and nurture them. Yeah. But people with ADHD get so excited about, like, say, a new computer or something to learn or whatever. And so if they made plans with somebody, they'll be like, okay, I'm just going to cancel that because this is so much more important. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of remind yourself, no, following through on plans is important. Mm -hmm. Um, Friendships are overwhelming. 
we don't like them. <laughs> now, what do you mean by that? You have you have friendships. I do. What do you mean you don't like them? Um, I do like them. I well, okay. I'll I'll rephrase. Mm-hmm. I think friendships can add anxiety mm-hmm. to your life. I'm already anxious, mm-hmm. so I'm like, oh, good. I'm going to bring more anxiety in. Uh, no, and then that isolates me and makes me sad. Okay. So not great. Mm-hmm. Have to redo that. We get bored. So if a friend of yours is talking or me, wait, mine, whatever, you get it. Yeah. Um, and I'm bored in a conversation. Mm-hmm. That is so hard. And they're talking about their baby or they're talking about somebody's sickness that you should remember, but you don't, mm-hmm. but you care about them, but you can't like say like, I don't really remember that. Mm-hmm. So you're just nodding and like, okay, mm-hmm. okay. How do I, what's the follow up question? I don't know. And then your mind goes and then you're not listening. Mm-hmm. We're inconsistent as friends. Mm. Hard, hard to be consistent. I feel like this is a lot of beating up on people with ADHD, so I'm going to go to the positive. Okay. Shall I? Look at you. Okay. Let's go. All right. Here's how we can improve our friendships, Mm -hmm. people. First of all, be aware. Mm -hmm. So I'm aware that I have this thing called ADHD. That's not your problem. Mm -hmm. That's not anyone else's problem. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a gift. My mind works differently. However... When I meet up with somebody, I don't just railroad a conversation about the Real Housewives Mm -hmm. because that might not be what they're, A, interested in, Mm -hmm. and then, B, I'm not really connecting. I'm just talking about what I'm hyper-focused on. Yeah. And that's, you know. That's interesting. I feel like I've been made more aware of that in the last few years as far as the difference between trying to connect in a conversation as opposed to making something about me. Yes. And I think sometimes they're interchangeable. Yeah. Like, I under, like I've got one friend who's hyper aware of that kind of stuff, and he's always calling you out on it. Really? But it's like, yeah, like, oh, way to make it all about you. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I wasn't trying to make it all about me. I was just trying to, like, connect. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that's happened to me. I, I understand what you're saying. Right. Because that happened to me, and here's an anecdote. But I, and I get his point, too. Like, maybe... Maybe I can somehow connect without inserting my own stupid little anecdote about a similar topic. With but, your an- antidote. But also, doesn't anecdote doesn't yeah. that mean if yes, you could accuse me of making it about myself, but also at the at the very least, I'm listening. I'm engaged. Yeah, I'm you listening are. to what you're saying, and I'm processing that info. Now, maybe that's the difference. Maybe it stops there without me. Well, that happened to me one time, blah, 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 blah. Right. So. Well, you're trying to engage. Well, that's the thing. They mm-hmm. give you these, uh, you know, conversation starters and stuff. But mm-hmm. you're right. Like, it's an awkward dance of let me add to this conversation, mm-hmm. but not make it about myself. Yeah. Do you uh, tend to think that you give solutions? Like, is that what you're kind of giving To your friend who's... Probably not. It's more of me just, you know... Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I've been there or, you know, I've experienced that. Or, I mean, sometimes if a solution's there and it's very obvious, of course I'll share that. But I feel like your mind goes to solutions before mine does, where I'm just just trying to listen and and understand this person's point of view. Yeah, well, you're being in the moment, uh right? You're good at being in the moment. I try. You're very good. I try. So that's what ADHD people have to do they have to be in the moment i think that's the stand up in me you know nothing forces you to be in the moment more than doing an hour of stand up in front of a room full of strangers oh my gosh that's such a great point or some of my other jobs you know being a cop talk about being in the moment talk about when you're going through some intense shit you're not thinking about anything else no you know I bet. So. Well, your life's on the line. Yeah. You can't. You yeah. have to be in the moment. Yeah. And, and comedy is the same way. Not that it's, I'm not trying to be dramatic about comedy, but like when you're up there doing stand up comedy, there's no time or room to th- be thinking about other things. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it happens sometimes. And like a really good comic or, or experienced comic can, I, I like me, I, I wasn't saying that I'm no, the way, but are. I've done this before where the only thing I, the only other thing I might be thinking about in the moment is the next joke. Okay. And sometimes I can like verbalize the current joke and be thinking about the next joke. You know, right. you don't want to do that too much because sometimes, you know, that'll bite you and you'll, you know, screw something up in this current joke. But like, but yeah, when I'm up there doing stand up, I'm not thinking about 
how my day went or right. what I'm going to eat for dinner. Well, that's not true. But, uh, <laughs> you know, just the minutia <laughs> of everyday life. I'm not, I, I try not to think because you're just, you, I'm engaged. I'm in the moment. The only thing I'm yeah. thinking about is this joke or this point or, you know, my technique or things about the show and the audience. And, you know, so that's, uh, I like that. I like. Yeah. And somebody made that analogy to like, Baseball, like when a baseball player, especially a hitter, yeah, when you're up there at bat, you're not thinking about anything else other than what pitch is coming. You know? Yeah, no, so, that's it. It's in the moment. Yeah, with performance, with everything. Okay, I have five minutes left to Go for it. explain. Okay, um, so to improve friendships, ADHD people, we have to be aware, and then so make a commitment for a month. Right. This just says make a commitment for a month. Focus on being a good listener. And if you use phrases like that, you'll hyper focus on it and then you'll become a better listener. Okay. And you have to if you have to say something, if you feel like, okay, I didn't really hear that or whatever, ask a simple statement or say a simple statement or like, can you repeat that? Mm -hmm. I'm 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 not tracking with what you're saying. What do you mean by that? Yeah. yeah. I, I'll do that sometimes. Yeah. I'll say, give me an example. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm throwing people off, but mm -hmm. that helps me so much yeah. with examples. So, uh, also to clarify, repeat what they just said mm -hmm. or what the point was. So then you could kind of get a grasp of, oh, okay, this is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because it's really hard for ADHD people to get like the thesis statement because mm -hmm. we're just all over it's that monkey monkey mind okay uh don't interrupt it says we already went over that but uh -huh. just don't yeah it's hard for me yeah. because i'm trying not to interrupt myself right now yeah. and that's weird yeah but i want to be engaged and i want to be like yeah i totally mm -hmm. under like i want to be like the cheerleader of the conversation mm -hmm. But I'm interrupting, and that could be seen as, you don't care about me, mm -hmm. why am I even here? I grew up on that. Uh, my mom, bless her heart, she, she, she's notorious for interrupting. And even more so, she she's always done this technique. She'll ask me a question, and your dad did this too. Oh, yeah. He'll ask me a question, and before I can answer, he's on to another topic. Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, did you watch that game last week? Yeah, actually. The, anyway, the Lakers are playing, so. <laughs> Wait. Oh, so now we're talking about, the, I thought you were talking about the football game. And I, okay. Sure. But my mom does that all the time. She'll ask a question, and before I can even answer it, she's on to a new topic. And it's wow. just like, okay. And I know she's, I think that's just years and years of repetitive behavior. She doesn't mean anything by it. Yeah. But uh, that's just the way some people's brains work. I think it's also probably, I, I noticed that with older people, especially with my dad and stuff, and he had ADHD, mm -hmm. like nobody's business. But I I think also it might be one of those things of, I want to say this before I forget. Mm -hmm. It's almost like having yeah. somebody with ADHD because sure. they're like, wait, I want to, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my thought. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Stick to a topic on hand. ADHD people with your friendships. So you're talking about something and then I'll be like, anyway, catch up. Mm -hmm. And this is how much I love it. And the yeah. old school bottles. And mm -hmm. those are pretty cool. Yeah. And remember when you had to like slap, the, like that's just what is happening in my head. Mm -hmm. So does that bother you? Like staying on topic? I mean, I've gotten used to it. Oh, did you take offense to it in the beginning? Kind of? No. I don't yeah. think so. You can uh, you can always read someone's intent. That's true. Or at least I can. And it's like, okay, she didn't mean to do that. It's not malicious. It's just how her brain works. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> so, nurturing your friendships, this is how we're going to do it, peeps. Oof. So, when talking to a friend, when you're hanging out, you're active listening. Remember, because we're doing that for a month. And then we're talking about what they want to talk about and we're not interrupting mm -hmm. and this is hard but when you're wrapping up say your coffee date or whatever make plans in the moment for the next mm -hmm. time to hang out that way you commit to it mm -hmm. can't just say to an adhd person like we'll figure it out because mm -hmm. we won't yeah 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to remember. And I'm sorry. And I love friends. I love you, but I'm not going to remember. Mm -hmm. So make sure you plan ahead. Okay. okay? Uh, tell your friends you care. <laughs> That's really one of the rules mm -hmm. because I think explaining like, no, I really care and love you. I'm not just trying to avoid you. I just kind of go into my own world, mm -hmm. which seems selfish, mm -hmm. but you know, what are you going to do? Okay. A develop new ways with uh, new, well, <laughs> develop ways to deal with poor memory. <laughs> well, what are some ways to deal with it? Okay. So what I do, and this is for gift giving, but let's go with what the coach says first. Mm -hmm. Make notes on your friends, it says. So like with George, when he would make notes to talk to his family in Seinfeld, Inside, yeah. Um, so, oh, she's pregnant. Her pregnancy's a little like this is hard for her. So write that down so you could catch up. Hey, how's the pregnancy going? Uh, what if there's a friend's wedding they're in? Hey, how did that go? Because I'm not gonna remember. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So also, if you're making notes. Dislikes, interests, things they enjoy. It's literally like you have to write these things down mm -hmm. because it's like you'll forget. You just will, and it's weird. And I know I just sound like a psycho, but listen, the coach says this stuff. I do that with you. I have uh, a Katie file in my little notepad. With my dislikes? Likes, dislikes. Uh, I keep a running gift thing, like gift ideas. Oh. Like, you know, sometimes you'll, we'll be out together and you'll point out like, oh, I like that. And I'm like, all right, put that in a little gift idea. And, and, and six months later, when I buy it for a specific gift for you, your mind's blown. You're like, how do you remember that? I'm like, I write this shit down. I know. It is blown. Yeah. Unlike me, who's just like, wait, concert, tickets, mm, yeah. birthday. <laughs> mm, boy. Um, okay, so. I do this. I'll make notes within the contact card because I have an iTelephone. Okay. So you could put notes in each contact. Oh, really? So I'll put birthday. Uh -huh. I'll put size shoe. What are they wearing? So for my gift giving skills. That's great. Uh, what's, you know, just so you, oh, the address of the person. Um, this says to subscribe to a service that will send cards on birthdays, anniversaries, because ADHD people forget. But also in case you don't want to subscribe, you can just write, get cards with stamps and addresses and pre-write it and be ready yeah. for that time. So you just have to kind of, find little like it's almost like study hacks mm -hmm. for just memory yeah um, and by the way you are i've mentioned this before but you're the best gift giver well I've i'm, ever I'm met. falling short birthday fail so thoughtful um but no you do that you you acquire gifts throughout the year you ha you used to have a uh, a gift closet I know, like, and I like don't a, have room, like a so radio I have to station. hide it around the house. <laughs> but yeah, I've, you'll buy random stuff. You'll buy Christmas gifts for people in March. Yeah, I already have Marks. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty excited yeah. about it. So that's that's great. Where I'm, I just wait to the last minute. I'm like, oh shit, what do they want? No, but you're a good yeah. gift giver. I mean, other than you, I I, I I put forth the effort for you, but everybody else, I'm just like, oh, could go suck an yeah, egg. Here's a gift card. Oh, alone. that actually could be a really great gift for somebody. I learned but that. Yeah, I, I never met anybody who, who preps so far in advance for gifts as you do. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. And so now I just have to take that and put it towards fostering friendships. Mm -hmm. So bullet points, ways to maintain friendships when you're neurodivergent, ADHD, talk about your condition, talk about it and let them know, but simultaneously work on it. Mm -hmm. Active listening uh, make a commitment, follow through, don't overcommit. Mm -hmm. Just once a month, mm -hmm. let's meet on this day. Okay. Hooray. Follow through and remember to always practice self care. Meaning, and that's meaning what? how you make friends. So you're not going to be a good friend if you're friggin' depressed and anxious gotcha. and just thinking about yourself. Or the Braves. Mm -hmm. Right. Or the Braves. Mm -hmm. For Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to. Go on a walk every day. Mm -hmm. Do your morning pages. All those little things. Gratitude list. Whatever the self-care is. Get an IV drip. They're great. 
do whatever you need to do Mm -hmm. so you can be your best. And on days that you're not feeling your best, you can reschedule things. You don't have to just be like, we're meeting no Mm -hmm. matter what. But let the person know, hey, I'm pretty sad. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry. I just don't feel like leaving the house today. Yeah. So I love you. Can we reschedule? Yeah. Be open. Be honest. Be open and honest. Mm -hmm. Because that's what friendship's all about. Mm -hmm. And this is Katie Stramberg signing off for ADHD Friendships. Good job, boo. Thank you. It was very informative. It is. It's so informative and important because you matter. That's right. I did a wink to the camera. It was pretty (laughs) cool. Pretty cool. Good job, boo. Thank you, boo. Appreciate that. Word of mouth this week. I got a good one. A buddy of mine out of Chicago. Got a new special out. Uh, his name's, uh, it's got a scary name. Ooh. Michael Myers. What a great name. Michael Myers is a uh, really funny dude. I've done some shows with him uh, in Chicago. Just one of those just kind of everyman type dudes. Uh, great jokes. Just real kind of mid-tempo, casual delivery. But just great writer, great jokes. Uh, really funny dude. Got a new uh, YouTube special called Perf- Michael Myers Performs Comedy for Real People. <laughs> I and, like that. Uh, you can find that on YouTube. Uh, you can find the audio wherever you stream audio. But Michael Myers, M-E-Y-E-R-S. Michael Myers Performs Comedy for Real People. Uh, good dude. Great comic. And, uh, yeah, he's excited about this new special. I think this is his first proper special. That's always exciting. That's when a awesome. comic uh, yes. finally releases a body of work out into the zeitgeist. Yes. But uh, yeah, just top notch comic. Just a lot of those Chicago comics. It's just one of those scenes, one of those cultures where, like, it's kind of like how I was in Atlanta, like, just people going out every night. Yeah. Just five, six, seven nights a week. Uh, and it's not necessarily an industry town. No one's doing it to get on late night or to get an agent. It's just like, no, we're just trying to get good at comedy. And, Every time I'm in Chicago, I'm always impressed by the the level of talent there. And that's he's, awesome. Uh, he's definitely one of the best in town. Michael Myers, M E Y E R S, performs comedy for real people. Check it out. Word of mouth, good Yay. stuff. Boo, where can we find you on Instagram? The letter K, the letter T, L O W Strandberg, B E R G, and like a strand of hair. No, I don't. Yeah. You still getting dressed every day? What, <laughs> what's going on there? Still okay. Doing that experiment. The dress every day has. Okay, uh-huh. I have gotten dressed. Uh-huh. I'm not just running around naked. Okay. But I do forget to do it. Yeah. But again, that's a commitment on me. So maybe instead of every day, every three days, I'll I'll present an outfit. Okay. I like that. Today it is a uh, pumpkin passion. I like it. I'm wearing <laughs> my crinkles. And I'm passionate about pumpkins. You're like George Costanza when you name your outfits. Uh, one of those early episodes, I think they were going, uh, he was coming with, going with Jerry to L.A. to do, uh, Jerry was doing The Tonight Show or something, and George overpacks, and he's trying to justify it, but he tells Jerry, he's like, well, I, I tend to dress based on mood. Yeah. And then Jerry goes, well, what mood is this? This is morning mist. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly. Oh, let's see. Live shows. You can catch me out on the road uh, in November. November 15th, I'll be in Greenville, South Carolina at Jack and Diane's. Aww. I'll be sucking on a chili dog. Uh, November 16th, I'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina at Good Nights Comedy Club. Uh, the 17th and 18th, I'll be in Bristol, Tennessee at the Blue Ridge Comedy Club. And then Sunday the 19th, I'm uh, making a U-turn going back to Greenville, South Carolina, back to Jack and Diane's. Doing a show there on Sunday the 19th as well. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Greenville on the 15th and the 19th. Raleigh on the 16th and Bristol on the 17th and 18th. All of those tickets available for your purchase right now at DumbDaveStone.com. Yes, DumbDaveStone.com and your Patreon so, rocks. Yeah, Patreon.com slash Dave's Kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, get up on that if you're not a patron. Uh, I do a cooking video every month and a podcast every month. So, yeah, that's uh, been going well. It's a lot of fun. And uh, the special, still on YouTube, Pack a Lunch. Uh, Because it packs a punch. It it packs a punch, pack a lunch. (gasps) Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the special uh, on YouTube and uh, the audio version. Thanks, Uh, Aaron. Oh, yeah. The vinyl. Got got the vinyl, 2LP vinyl. Uh, Those are still available at BlondeMedicine.com, or you can reach out to me directly. Um, But, yeah, get on that. 2LP, colored translucent vinyl. 
Uh, great artwork by uh, Barry Blankenship, a.k.a. Barry the Art Guy. Can't get the record so, out. That's okay. I'm that's sorry. all right. It's a faulty product. But, <laughs> okay. so, yeah, there's all them plugs. Guys, this has just been a joy. Yes, always a pleasure, Boo. Thanks for this uh, informative lesson. Oh, my gosh, of course. I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I learn a lot by yeah. listening to you. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. the only one. Oh, no. oh, just kidding. Not at all. Not at all. Well, uh, guys. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. plug the phone number. Oh, yeah. People the, call with your problems. Yeah, call with your problems. <laughs> or suggestions. We're, or We're here to help. Yeah. You know, give us a call. 562-548-2012. In that order. That's the order of the numbers. You it gotta is. get the order right. You better. Or you're gonna get somebody else and we can't help it's you. It's so true. 562-548-2012. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you guys so much for listening. We love you. Bye. Oh, Lord, yeah. Okay, thank you.